Hey everybody! Today, Rado previews a prototype of curators, but before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goose, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, then welcome to my lovely little museum over here, and welcome to Jen's museum. Although, we don't have much in the way of artifacts to show, and that is what we're going to be trying to fix over the course of the game, as we build up more and more wings of our museum and fill them with artifacts that we get from around the world. And we do all this by leveraging our five different employee types. The archaeologist, the restorer, the auctioneer, the carpenter, and the financier. So, we're already set up, ready to go. Everybody starts with four grand in their back pocket and one visitor ready to go, even though we don't have anything on display for that visitor. I am the first player. Also, I should say, randomly, we have a couple of contracts, which are kept secret. These give us targets of how we are trying to design the layout of our museum. If I would like to get three points and a contract to display the Dice Tower of the Roman Soldier, well, I need to get rooms in my wings in this particular configuration. And uh, th uh, these cards, the ones that have the red background, are generally the simpler ones. The more complex ones, well, they're worth more points, and as you can see, they're more complex. I need to get a red, a black, a red, a blue, and then one of my choosing. So I have to be a little bit more clever about how I lay out my museum. Jen, of course, she's got two herself. A very simple uh, contract, so she could get a floral still life. And then there's Vincent van Gogh's self portrait portrait, and again, a more complex one, which is why it's worth more points. So, we've got those. Also, if you're playing the full version of the game, as part of setup, we get a random, uh, randomly selected extra rule that changes stuff. Today, I'm playing largest of a kind, which means there are bonus points to be had for having my, my, in my biggest contiguous block of a single color type of rooms in the various wings I build. But it could have been, hey, we have a draft we have to deal with, or it could have been longest corridor. But today, it is longest or largest room type. Okay. Largest of a kind. Right, so now we are ready to go. I am the first player. And on my turn, it's really simple. I am either going to single or double allocate one of my worker types and take the corresponding action. And then here's a reminder of how things score. Leftover money is worth points at the end of the game. Exhibits are worth points, etc., etc. So, what that means is I am going to either activate my archaeologist, my carpenter, my collection manager, or the auctioneer, I call them, uh, the restorer, or the financial manager. That's what these discs are over here. And these discs are two-sided. If I decide right now to run my archaeologist, that means I will get to go out into the world and find some artifacts, and I'll put them in my storehouse. After I'm done, I flip this, and now I don't have an archaeologist anymore, but instead I've got two, um, not auctioneers, what were they? Collection managers. I've got two collection managers. So on a future turn, I could do a single carpentry action, a single restoration action, a single financial action, or a double auction action. But then if I did a double auction action, they flip, and now I could do two restores or one archaeology, etc. So every time you do an action, you're setting yourself up for the future as well, because ideally, you want to be doing double actions so you can get more done in the same amount of time. So, what am I going to start out with? Well, you know what? At the beginning of the game, we have no wings to our museum, so which means you can't display anything. So I'm going to start out a very common start. I am going to activate my only carpenter. Now that means I've got two financial people. And that means I get to buy one, since I only used one carpenter, one of these wings on this spiral. I can take any one I want, but I have to start at the outer edge and work my way in. The, the outermost one from the center, this would be free. I could build this for free. This would cost a thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I start with four thousand bucks. So strictly speaking, I could build this, 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 or this. And which one do I choose? Well, I'd like to save my money for the auction house or for points at the end of the game. So I could just go on ahead and take this because it's free. But this is a little tiny thing. I can't do much with it. Although actually, I can do something with it. There is actually, you might think, well, I would always pay a little bit of money so I can get a bigger wing, but there are reasons to have tiny wings. But I think for now, I'm going to go for a bigger wing. So I'm going to pay 1000 of my starting capital, skip this, and get this one. All right, and now that means I can install this however I want. You can see I've got two little um, doors here. 
And my wing either has to be adjacent to an existing wing I've already placed in a previous turn, or adjacent to one of these doors. So I could go like this, or like this, or like this, or like this. Hey, I'm adjacent to both doors. And as I'm laying this down, remember, I'm thinking about my secret goals. So this thing says, I want a red, black, red, blue, and then something of any type. And if I can pull all that off and get all these rooms full of exhibits, I'll score five bonus points. So here's a red, black, which means then I need another red and a blue and something else. Okay. Well, you know what? With that in mind, let's just go like this. That'll keep it simple. I got to get another red here and then some more stuff up here for this T shape. All right. Uh, yeah, yeah, that looks good. Okay, so that was it. That was my turn. I had one lumber, or one, one carpenter who I used to build one. I spent a little bit of bucks to not just get the cheapest one available, and my turn is over. It is now Jen's turn, and she's in the exact same situation. We start with one of each of our employees. Jen could also build a room, and suddenly this one costs a thousand. This one is free, etc., etc. But you know what? It's great to build rooms. But they don't do us any good unless we've got artifacts that we can exhibit in these rooms. So I think Jen's going to start out. She's going to do a little bit of Indiana Jonesing. She is going to activate her uh, archaeologist, which now means she is set up on a future turn to do two uh, auction actions because uh, you know her archaeologist is gone, and now she's got two auctioneers or collection managers. So as an archaeologist, what does Jen get to do? Well. She basically, with one archaeologist, gets to pick one color. There are three colors, to, uh, three different types of artifacts red, blue, and black. She can pick one color and find one. And considering the fact she wants to fill up a bunch of red rooms to complete this floral still life contract, I think she'll pick red. So she takes one red, and um, only one because she had one archaeologist, and uh, she puts it down here in the storehouse. Now, Whenever an archaeologist goes out, not only do they give you an object, they also fill the auction house as well. So Jen is going to take an additional red and put it over here in the auction house. There are now, at the beginning of the game, there's one black, one blue, and one red that could be bought using the auctioneer action. Now there are two reds that can be bought. Okay, so that was um, Jen's turn. It is my turn again. And let's see, what am I going to do? Well, I cannot build anymore because I do not have any carpenters. If I want to build more, I have to either activate my, um, oh, what do you call it? My restorer so that I could get to, to this carpenter, or I have to activate my financier so I could get to this carpenter. Hey, you know, I want to build some more. I already have a plan for how I want to build. So let's right now do a financial action. Financial action means I get money uh, per visitor. And remember, at the beginning of the game, each of us has one visitor tile. So every visitor will pay me a thousand bucks or bring me a thousand of income for every financier. Instead of just activating one, since they're both here, I'm going to activate both. And that gives me two times one is 2,000 more bucks. Woohoo! I'm rich. Rich, I tells you. And now I have two archaeologists and I've got another builder. Okay. So that was my turn. It is Jen's turn again now. And, I mean, she could activate her financier, get herself another archaeologist. She could start building. But hey, she's got a double um, auction house. So what the heck? Let's say Jen is going to activate both of these, uh, which gives her another archaeologist. And now she's got two restorers. And because she's doing a double uh, archaeology or uh, auction house action, that means she can pick two colors and buy pieces in those colors. If she only activated one... If she only activated this one, or let's say she only activated this one to get her archaeologist back, she would only get one color. Um, you know what? I think Jen is only, even though she could activate two, which means she'd be able to get two, right now at the auction house, these all cost $2,000 apiece. This only costs $1,000 apiece. So Jen doesn't want to pay $2,000 for something. So I think she's only going to activate one of her auctioneers to get her archaeologist back. And that means she will get the cheapest one available. She'll pay 1000 to get this red. The red that she had actually found, she has now actually bought at auction. And now she's got two in her storehouse. Okay, so that was her turn. And now she could go back and do some more archaeology. Um, although, again, sooner or later, she's going to have to do some carpentry because uh, you can't display these things. They're just in a dusty warehouse until you uh, have some place to exhibit them. So that was Jen's turn. But she didn't want She wanted to take advantage of the fact that, hey, there was a cheap artifact she could get really quick that she herself put there. It is my turn again. 
So, do I want to do some more carpentry? I've got the money, I could buy some more, but it would be nice if I could do a double carpentry, because that means I could get two rooms in one action, but that means I have to restore some artifacts first, so I have both of my carpentry tokens. Unfortunately, I don't have anything yet, so maybe why don't I go and do some archaeology as well? Which reveals another auctioneer for me and one of my financial people back. So, I, because I'm doing two archaeologists, I get to pick two colors. Hey, I like red. I like black. I want to fill all of these rooms up. Let's go on ahead and pick red and black. Boom, boom. And remember, whenever the archaeologist goes out, it belongs in a museum! So we get our own stuff and, um, you know, the museum stuff, but some of it goes for sale. I guess maybe to cover the costs of my whirlwind adventures, you know, being uh, chased by bad people and all that. So, I did two archaeologies. That means I picked two colors. I put them here and over here. And now there are two cheap artifacts waiting to be bought at auction. And hey, I could do a double buy next turn and get both of them. Okay, it is Jen's turn. And let's see here. <clears throat> so... Uh, you know, Jen would like to get these restored, but you can't restore them until you've got some place to display them. So I think Jen is going to go on ahead and build. And build. All right, so she can only build one. And she'll go on ahead and take this one, the one I skipped. She'll take this and add it for free. So she's got her first wing. A wing is, I mean, a wing is made up of several rooms. This is a wing that only has one room. This is a wing that has four rooms in it. All right, so... Uh, Jen has got her first wing, which means she is ready to start preparing. Although, 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 she could get this one for free. But she has two. This needs exactly two. This is free. This costs one. This costs two. This costs three. Jen's going to blow all of her remaining cash, which is almost a point. Remember, um, it's four to one. At the end of the game, 4,000 is worth a point. Jen's throwing away three quarters of a point to jump and grab this one instead. Because that's two red. And remember... She wants three red all filled up to complete this. And she's got two red things to go in these two red rooms now. I think actually she kind of likes that. So that is what Jen did. She paid a lot for it. But hey, you know what? Um, Jen could see that I'm getting ready to build and I might have taken it from her. Because again, she doesn't know what secret colors I covet. So Jen jumped out and grabbed it while the grabbing was good. And she's broke. But hey, she's got two financiers now. So she could get um, some money back if she needs it. Back to me. Okay. So what was I going to do? Right, I wanted to keep building. I'm going to go back and build some more. I'm only using a single. So, although, 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 uh, if I want to do a double build, well, I could go on ahead and use my restorer. Yeah, mm, no, yes, ooh, ah, hmm, interesting. Okay, <laughs> crazy. I am going to do an auction action. And I could do two auction actions, which means I could pick two colors. So I could buy blue and black, or you know, black and red, or whatever. But I don't need... or do I? Uh, if I do, then that... Oh, I like that. Okay, yeah. So I'm going to do a double auction action. That means I pick two colors and buy. Hey, there's a cheap red and a cheap black. I'm going to buy those. Now, I could buy as many of a color as I wanted. Uh, so I could buy all the red and all the black, but I'm just buying the cheap ones. Because remember, these ones are more expensive. All right, so I've got more stuff in my storehouse. That was my turn. I still got three grand. Okay, Jen's turn. Right. Jen is going to restore. She has one restorer available to her, which means if she activates one restorer, she can restore one type of... Uh, of I want one color. So a single thing is going to let her restore all the color. She will restore all of these reds that she's got in storage. And when you restore them, they get displayed. And Jen now has something to show people. And what that means is when a wing... And remember, this is a wing. This is a wing with one room. This is a wing with two rooms. When a wing is completely full, which Jen just did... That attracts new visitors. Jen has just gotten her second visitor. And if you look closely, by putting it here, she covers up this space. And that means Jen gets two more contracts. Jen now has more contracts she's trying to build for. She, uh, to get the milkmaid, she needs, uh, in this particular order, two blues and a red and a black on either side. And then her more complex one. Hey, this could actually work well 
with this because that could be two of the reds. And then if there were another red over here, uh, she would have this one completed and she'd be on her way to that one too, potentially. Although, oh, that's not going to work the way it is because if there were another, or, or no, no, if there were, yeah, okay, if there were another red here, then that would be this red, this red, then be a black, a blue, a red. Oh, but this would have to be a black. Ah! Trying to puzzle out how to get all these things to work together is a big part of the game. So anyway, Jen now has a second visitor that got her more secret contracts that she could try to design this sort of Tetris puzzle of laying them out. And uh, she is done. Okay, it is my turn. And I am going to do a double restore. You saw Jen do a single restore, which means... Oops, ah, there we go. Oh dear. Her, her museum just went flying. Sorry about that. If you do a double restore, you get to pick two colors. So I'm going to pick, I don't know, black and red. And I am going to go... Um, I'm restoring all these reds. I'm restoring one of the black. I can't do the other one because I don't have any place to do it. And I have just completed a wing. Now this was a bigger, more complex wing, which means at the end of the game, I get two points for having completed this wing. Whereas Jen only gets one point for her wing that's completed at the end of the game. But I also now have an extra visitor, which means I also get um, more contracts. The Night Watch, Maximo, and uh, got to figure out how to make these things work with these other ones that I'm already trying to do. Okay, and I've still got something in the storehouse. And now, I've finally got, I could now do a double build action. Uh, but that'll be on my next turn. Jen's turn, meanwhile, she's broke. So Jen's going to do a financier action, and since it's a double, and she's got two visitors, that's two times two, Jen just made four grand, and she's back flush right where she started with four grand in her pocket. That gives her another um, uh, our worker, or, you know, an another carpenter. So she's got two carpenters, and she's got two archaeologists. So she could start doing lots of double actions now. So that was it for her. Back to me. And unfortunately, I've only got one financier, so I can only get two grand. So I'd like to get my other financier out. But I've still got 3,000. I think that's enough. I'm going to do a double build. Boop! There's my financier. Here's another, um, what do you call it? Restore. And I, this is free. This costs one, this costs two, and so on. And I'm going to buy two, and I have to pay up front before I take them. So it's not like if I take this one for free, this one is suddenly free. Um, I have to take them at the same time. So, And these are the two I want, aren't they? Because if I look back at what I'm trying to do... Right. If I put... Yes. Ye no. Shoot. Shoot, shoot, shoot. I need a blue. Because I've, I've got the red and the black. And I was going to put this red... Or if, if I put this here... Hey, that's the red and the black. And I need a blue. Although I... Um, yeah. Because this black could be the wild. And I need a blue there. So that would cost me 1000 This would cost me 2000 All right, I'm going to spend everything. I'm skipping this one, which was free. I'm spending 3000 to buy... This was 1000 This was 2000 And boom. As you can see, I have made the layout. But I've got to get these last three rooms filled up, at which point I will score five points off of this at the end of the game. So there we go. Okay. And, uh, and now, if I fill this up, I'm going to get another visitor. If I fill this up, I'm going to get another visitor. So, while grabbing tiny wings isn't very exciting because you really want to have a lot of rooms to fill up, grabbing tiny wings can be great because they get fill they you get you you can fill them very quickly, which means you get customers more quickly, which means your financiers become more powerful more quickly. So, uh, that was it for me. I've got a lot of stuff. Jen doesn't have quite as much. She could now do a double build. Boop. And what is she going to do? Well, this is free. So she'll take that, and then she can pay, you know, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. So that got her the third one she wanted for this, and it's almost filled up as well. But she needs to be thinking about all of these others that she is trying to complete. What, uh, you know, based on that line of three she's got, uh, you know, yeah, there's nothing really that jumps out, really. I mean, again, that Neanderthal man, if the Neanderthal man... Oh, okay, if we look at it this way and say, hey, here's the two reds we need from this. And then we put a black, a red, a blue, and a black. Then Jen could, off of this, finish Neanderthal Man. So right, she needs to get the stuff to fill around that now. And she she already got one of her two for free. She can get this one for a thousand. And look how big it is. That'll keep her busy for a while. Does this work for her though? 
Ah, oh, not for Neanderthal, man. It gets the blue there, it gets the red there, but it puts a blue there instead of a black, and she needs a black there! Ah! All right. And, um... Right, in fact, actually, yeah, this just won't work at all um, towards Neanderthal Man. But she has to decide, is she going to try and chase after the bonus points she could get for Neanderthal Man, or does she just care about more about getting five points for filling this thing up? Plus, everything you have on display is worth a point at the end of the game, too. Hmm... Right, well, she, this is the only one that has multiple reds in a row of the one she's gotten so far. Now, if she gets a bunch more visitors, she can get some more contracts down here, but that's a ways off. So does she pay a thousand for this one, which won't work with that, or two thousand for this? Oh, wait a minute, or three thousand. Does this one work? If she pays three thousand, then what does this want? This wants, um, no, shoot. Right, we need a blue here, a red here. Oh, no, we need a black and a red and a blue and a black to make this work. Right, and a black, and nope, that's not a black. Yep, neither of these work for her. Shoot. So, I think she will just go ahead and take this one, which is only a thousand. And what the heck, she'll put it like this. Because you can still see, that's the black. So she's got the red, red, black. She needs to put a black here, a blue here, and a red here to finish that for six points at the end of the game. And she needs to get this filled and this filled so that she can get the uh, extra visitors and extra points. So that was that. All right. And as you can see, we've gone halfway through our spiral now, folks. This spiral is the timer for the game. Once all of these wings have been taken and installed, that triggers the end of the game. I believe there's two more full rounds that play through. And then we tally up and see who did the who made the best. Also, whoever takes the final one and triggers that end also gets one free bonus uh, artifact of their choice that goes into their storehouse. So that was Jen's turn. And so suddenly she's in it. And uh, she's got more money than me. She's got a lot of space to fill, but nothing. So she's got to start sending out archaeologists. And she has two archaeologists. Meanwhile, me, I mean, I could do some more restoration and put this black over here, but I'd rather save up for a more powerful multi-restoration, which means i got to get some more stuff. Hey, I've got my financiers. I could make 4,000. I am broke. Let's do that. Financiers, two times two. I just made four like Jen did a little while ago. Three, four... Okay, and that's it for me. And now back to Jen. And Jen's going to send out Indiana Jones. She's going to send out two Indiana Jones, picking two colors. She will pick red and um, blue, let's say. Red and blue. So she got a red and blue for herself. Red and blue show up in the auction house. And uh, that was free. The All right. So that is that. So now she can get these restored. As soon as she gets this restored, she will increase the patronage and mean her financiers will get more powerful again. So uh, next turn, she might just want to go on ahead and do a quickie restore and get that done. But in the meantime, back to me. Hey, there's now some cheap stuff in the auction house again, and I need black, red, and blue. I've got one auctioneer. If I do that, then I could do a double restore in two colors. And if I do a double restore, I'll finish this and get my second wing done. Oh, I like that very much. So if I just do a single auctioneer and pay a thousand for this um, red that Jen just brought back, thanks ever so much. And I could pay more. I could pay two thousand and get multiple reds, which I'll probably need later. But I'm saving my cash, so I've got cash on hand to build. So that was it for me. I just did one, and then back over to Jen, and. Uh, she will go on ahead and do a single restore. She'll restore this red. She's completed this entire wing, which has brought in another patron. So now, uh, she, you know, now she does a financial. She will get two times three. She'll get six thousand bucks. So I mean, the more money you're making, the more you can happily spend to jump further in the queue and get the things that are perfect for the contracts you're trying to complete. Uh, what will Jen do? I don't know, folks. I think that should give you a pretty good idea of the overall flow of curators. And now, before I get to my final thoughts, please remember this was a paid Kickstarter preview, so you should take my subjective opinions with a grain of salt. And with that out of the way. 
I gotta say, we really enjoyed Curators. Uh, it's a very sharp game, very quick. As a two-player game, Jen and I found we could get this done pretty much in about a half an hour, so it zips along very quickly. Uh, I guess with more players, it'd take a little bit longer, but the box says 45 minutes. That probably is true. And uh, yeah, uh, you really don't have a lot of time, and generally, you've got a whole bunch of contracts you're trying to complete, but, um, but you can't get them all done, so it's really a very puzzly exercise of trying to lay out your tetris -y style tile laying to maximum effect, but while focusing on that, also spending an equal amount of time, uh, you know, going out and getting the artifacts, either buying them or uh, just, you know, getting them for free. But every time you go out and get artifacts for free, you are giving your opponents first dibs on nice, cheap artifacts. And you might think, why? Why would I ever buy an artifact if I can always go out to get it for free? The central element of this game, these five discs that indicate what actions you have available to you at any time, is so Oh, clever and so compelling. I uh, you know it's it's really you know not a, a super brain burn or anything like that. It's just more a question of right, what do I want to get done? I have enough money. I would like to buy two rooms at once. But to be able to do that, I have to get this thing flipped over. But if I want to um, do restoration, I've got to get stuff first. So I really should do this double and then, oh, but if I wait one more and do this other thing, then I could do a double uh, collect and a double restoration, finally leading to that double room build. And by the time you get there, the room you want was gone. So even though you could try to find perfect, hyper-efficient double moves throughout, you just don't have the time to do it because the game zips along. First come, first serve for the cheap stuff in the museum or the actual wings that we're trying to grab. And, uh, you know, one interesting thing about this game is the player length is defined by the players because if everybody stops expanding with buying new wings and instead just spends all their time making money, which is worth points, and trying to fill up their existing wings and messing with the auction house and all of that, well, the game can stretch out. It's not until all the wings are grabbed. So if you're in a situation where you think, you know what, I could get three, maybe even all four of these contracts built and filled, and my gosh, that would win me the game! Um, you know, so some player really wants to drag it out so they've got the time to get all the stuff in the right place at the right time. But the other player says, Okay, I'm going to good to get one of these. These are complicated and they don't really seem to overlap. I need to burn this game quick so I don't give you the time to build up because you might have gotten lucky and gotten contract cards that work well together, whereas, you know, due to luck of the draw, I didn't. But that's the thing. This game gives you control over that luck of the draw because then you can decide, I can't pull these things together. I need to race and finish it up and just try to get as many points as I can to prevent other players from being able to leverage maybe they got a luckier draw. And all of these considerations within the, you know, through the lens of, but what can I do right now? Because I always want to be doing double actions if I can, but I want to be setting up future double actions as well, which is why I often will do a single action. It's sharp, it's fun, it's quick, and, uh, you know, a nice light action management puzzle, and what can be a very crunchy uh, looking forward, right, if I can get that piece over there, but that's going to cost me 5000 I have to wait till somebody else buys these other rooms, and then it'll only cost me 2000 and it'll be the perfect thing that fulfills two of my contracts. You know, that kind of uh, uh, wait-and-see, bird-in-the-hand, two-in-the-bird, or two-in-the-bush tension that can evolve is really great as well. I mean, I like everything... Well, I don't quite like everything about this game. I mean, on the whole... Uh, you know, th this is great fun. We've really enjoyed it. I definitely think it would be a key for us. I do have one complaint, though, and that is actually the game beginning, which is, at the beginning of the game, only half of your actions are of any value at all. You literally have nothing in your storehouse, so you can't, from the first r turn, use your, um, oh, what, your uh, restore, so that you could lead to a double build action if you wanted. Uh, you know, the, the first few turns of a game are largely going to play out the same every time. And there's just a couple different paths. You know, it really does blossom. as, But it's a shame it doesn't start blossom. I don't understand why. They give us some seed capital. They give us some seed money in terms... But why doesn't everybody start with... You know, if the game came with a whole bunch of, of wings that could take anything, they're just a size one that could take anything, and everybody got a random artifact in their storehouse right from the get-go, that means on the very first turn all five of your actions would be viable. You could um, get the thing into the room, or you could build more rooms, or you could do financial stuff, you know, or you could do auctions, and I, I would love to see that. It's a minor thing, because what I'm talking about is the first, you know, three turns of this game 
are going to kind of play out samey every time with just a little bit of variety and you know, opportunities. And then the game opens up. I'd like to see the game open from the get-go. It's my one complaint. If, if I were the developer on the game, I would certainly look into that. You know, just extra little multi-use rooms. Everybody starts with a random thing. Everybody starts with their money, visitors. And then, ugh, I don't think I'd be able to have any real critiques against it at all. So, actually, I talked to the developers a little bit about this, why uh, they didn't start out with all of the actions being equally viable. Turns out they did experiment with this very idea in development, but they found that um, having everything available bestowed a pretty significant first player advantage. And um, I could. I can totally see why that'd be a problem. And while they did experiment with balancing out, uh, you know, giving later players in turn order, you know, stuff to make up for it, in the end they decided it was best for the overall holistic design to uh, just go with the system as it is. And I get it. That makes sense. So, okay. I mean, I was worried going into the game that the randomness of these cards could be slightly unfair and tur you know turn the game uh, in one direction or another in favor of one player because somebody gets lucky with things that really dovetail together and another player doesn't. But like I said, the game gives players control. If you don't think you can really leverage those contracts, race to the end of the game so other players won't do it. So everything about this game is sharp. I love this. I would love to see this action selection mechanism used in bigger, heavier, meatier Euros too. I mean, because this is definitely a quick, fun, little, almost a filler. Maybe kind of a filler plus. And this is definitely kind of a gateway, or a lightish on the gateway side. Maybe not quite gateway. I'd probably gateway plus. This is a good next step. If you introduce somebody to Carcassonne and they like it, this would be a great next step. Um, where, you know, people are really blown away. Oh, yeah, well, let's bring money into it. Let's have everybody have their own fields. And, uh, you know, let's uh, worry about Tetris pieces and archaeology and all the rest of it. And secret contracts. Long story short, Curators is sharp. It's a fun game and uh, you know we really have enjoyed our time with this prototype. And that's my final thoughts, folks. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Have a very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Bye-bye.